Hey guys, this is Emmerich from Emmerich's Time Lapse, and welcome back to a new Time Lapse Tips Tuesday after a two year break. This is episode 14, and in this video, I'm going to share with you five tips to create better motion control time lapses. Let's go. If you like time lapse and hyperlapse photography, please consider subscribing to this channel. It is free for you and help me so much. You can also check my online courses on my website where I offer nearly 40 hours of time lapse and hyperlapse classes. Motion control time lapses are amazing. They create a very cinematic and natural camera movement on your final video. If you don't know yet, a motion control time lapse is a time lapse created with the help of what we call a motion control system. This includes sliders, but also motorized pan and tilt heads. We can use one of those two or mix them up to create a two or three axis motion control time lapse. They are definitely a lot trickier than just a camera on a simple tripod. So here are my five tips to create better motion control time-lapse videos. Number five, take the time to analyze what movement would work the best for the view and angle you want to capture. Sometimes a panning shot would work a lot better than just a slider one or vice versa. What is the main reason here why you want to create a motion control instead of a regular static one? Find the reason for it. If you're using the wrong camera movement, the time-lapse and the motion will look out of place and make the final video look weird. Once you are on location, use your camera live view and play with your camera to see what movement will look the best before you set up your motion control system. This will create a better time lapse and make you save tons of time on location when you set up your gear. Number four. Here is a mistake I've made several times. When you shoot a motion control time lapse with a slider, you do not have to use the entire length of your slider. Once you have your shot and movement set up, check what exact length would work for your specific time lapse. The more slider you use, the faster the camera movement will be, so the time lapse will look completely different. If you are capturing a 10 minute long time lapse using three feet of your slider, the movement will be a lot slower than if you use six feet, for example. Knowing what length you want to use for that specific time lapse is very important and will make the difference on the final video. Again, use the video mode or live view of your camera to check your movement before you start shooting the time lapse. Number three, make sure your composition looks like a great composition all along. I've seen a lot of videos online where the composition looks like crap. <laughs> sorry for my French, for half of the movement. Well, why don't you try getting a nice composition for the entire duration of the motion control time-lapse? So now I'm doing my best to pretty much get a very nice composition and angle for the entire duration of the video, which pretty much means that every single frame out of the time-lapse could be a great picture on its own. If you're not able to find a great composition all along, well, maybe rethink your camera movement completely. Maybe a motion control time-lapse isn't really needed there. You can also use motion control time lapses to reveal something, which means the beginning of the time lapse might not be as good looking as the end of it, but the camera movement will then reveal your final subject, like this example here. Even though the beginning doesn't look really good, the camera is sliding and tilting up to then reveal downtown Los Angeles in the background. So. The movement makes sense here. Number two, make sure the duration of the shoot and the camera movements are balanced. This is very important during a day to night or night to day motion control time lapse. You want to end up with a well balanced day and night ratio. If you only have five seconds of daylight and 35 seconds of night time, you understand that the time lapse will look a little bit weird and not well balanced in a way. So make sure the camera movement works with the day to night transition. Usually I make sure the camera reaches about halfway of my movement when the sun sets or rises. That way the day and night ratio is usually pretty good. Number one, if you are shooting with a slider, you need to use a foreground element. A slider is usually no longer than 
five or six feet, which means anything that is very far away will look static on the time lapse. This is what we call motion parallax, where far away objects will move a lot slower than objects that are very close from the camera. If they are too far away, it will even look completely static. With a slider, make sure to use a foreground element that is only a few feet away. Usually about a meter is pretty good. If you're using a pan and tilt system only, the foreground element isn't always needed, as you can see here on, on this time lapse, but it could be a plus if you have the possibility to have one. Check my time lapse masterclass America in Motion for more in depth lessons about motion control time lapse videos. The masterclass is now over 13 hours long with tons of cool lessons on location to learn time lapse and hyperlapse photography. Link in the description below if you're interested. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.